Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. So our focus now moves to freight. We're still thinking about how we can meet people's needs in planning and policy. We've been talking this morning about moving people, and now we're talking about moving freight. And we have our second panel discussion. So without more ado, I'm going to ask the panelists to come to the stage. And of course, once they're on the stage and their moment comes to speak, I'll introduce them. So uh, first of all, could I uh, ask the uh, minister from the Federal Republic of Germany, Dr. Peter Ramsauer, to come to the stage, please. Minister, thank you very much. Ah. <laughs> uh, could I ask uh, the Vice Prime Minister from Ukraine, Boris Koleshnikov, to come to the stage? You're very welcome, sir. Uh, John Pokari, please. Jean-Claude Delen. And Michael Parker. Yeah, that's the other one. So we're, uh, we, we pretty much understand how these panel discussions work now. I've already had the pleasure of introducing you this morning, uh, Minister. So I won't give you a second introduction. I think your biography remains the same as it was about an hour and a half ago. And so I would ask you, sir, if you would like to begin with a four-minute contribution on this subject of meeting people's needs in the area of freight. Das Thema lautet Fracht, Transporte. Freight, transport, and their impact on the freedom of the individual is the topic on our agenda, human beings between freight and transportation. And I will wait a moment until everybody has put his or her earphones on. So our question today is, where is the human being between freight and transportation or where is the human being between freight and politics? Now, in the introductory speeches we have had this morning, we've been told that human beings actually wear two hats or have two identities if we consider freight and mobility. On the one hand, there are the needs the requirement, what do people need, and to what extent does this trigger freight? So a human being involved in business processes, human beings in terms of the consumer trigger freight, so to speak, cause freight. Now that's one identity. And the other identity would be the following. Sometimes the very same person suffers from the consequences of mobility, because freight transportation has an impact on our environment, um, increases our CO2 emissions, has an impact in terms of pollution, air pollution, noise pollution, etc. Now, in Germany, we've been dealing with this issue intensively in the last few years, and I would like to give you one or two figures so that you know what we are dealing with. This is the mid-term perspective. This is the analysis of our needs in Germany. In Germany, up to the year 2025, we will have about 70% more freight, i.e. an increase by 70%, 70 unless we undertake serious measures. This will mean that road traffic will increase by 85%. And the transit freight traffic, i.e. traffic through Germany up to the year 2025, will increase by 120 50 by 150 percent, i.e. increase two and a half 
fold. Germany is a transit country, so there's traffic from the south to the north and from the east to the west and vice versa. And I don't have to tell you what this means in terms of safety, road safety, but also in terms of emissions, exhaust gases and similar issues. Now, the bulk or a major part of my budget I spend on railroad systems. We are trying to enhance the railway infrastructure because we are facing a number of challenges, as I've just told, and we should try to at least reduce the increase, the percentage rate I've just mentioned. So we should try to get traffic or transportation away from the road and rather go for rail-bound traffic and transportation or transportation by boat. This is necessary also in terms of the resources because we have limited resources with respect to the road and we have more as far as railroads and um, ships are concerned and that's all I would like to tell you now about Germany. Thank you very much indeed. Um, we had a, a, a very interesting uh, plug earlier on for the value of shifting passengers by railway. Now we have a very interesting plug for the value of shifting freight by railway. It would be quite interesting to discuss maybe at some point uh, if one had to prioritise between those two where the particular values lie. But that's a very interesting uh, contribution to get us started. I'm now going to ask uh, Boris Koleshnikov if he will very kindly uh, speak for about four minutes. Uh, he's a Vice Prime Minister of Ukraine, so we're very honoured indeed to have a Vice Prime Minister with us today. He's also the Minister of Infrastructure. He's been a member of uh, Parliament in Ukraine since 2006. And by the way, he's also the founder and president of the Boris Koleshnikov uh, Fund, which is a charitable foundation. You're very welcome indeed. Спасибо, господин Майк, уважаемые дамы и господа. Наша страна, я начну с того, чем закон. Thank you very much for this kind introduction. And as Michael already pointed out quite rightly, our country is a country which is still um, uh, still doesn't dif doesn't dif differentiate between pa passenger transport and freight transport on the um, railroads. This is to do with uh, us being part of the Soviet Union for a long term, and we didn't have a market economy here. And therefore, our country is uh, faced with formidable challenges here when it comes to the infrastructure and reorganizing it. We're talking about the transportation needs of our society. We're facing formidable challenges. It's to do with quality of life and the economy in general. So what are the efforts on the way in Ukraine in order to enhance the quality of life? I think everybody who's in the transportation industry is faced with formidable challenges, of course. And each of these challenges is pressing, is very urgent. And all of these are interrelated, interconnected, and you need to find holistic solutions to them. You cannot resolve one challenge in isolation. Let's talk about the environment, for instance. We, we are definitely not the Bahama Islands. Let me be candid here, let me be frank. We have 22,000 kilometers in our railroad network, but 10,000 out of these railroad kilometers are electrified. And over the next 10 years, we need to add an additional um, uh, a kilometer num or mileage of 5,000 kilometers and connect it uh, to the grid, electrify it. We This will help us bring CO2 emissions down by 45 percent over the next years if we electrify an additional number of 5,000 kilometers of the railroad system. I mean, in the old days, urban planning also was subject to a planned economy and therefore quality of life is an issue. Um, also, in terms of transportation, there is no genuine diversification between commercial or, and residential neighborhoods. All of this also has an impact on the economy. Music